Okay, so today I decided to do another vlog um, to share out a nitty ramble that came to mind when I was watching a podcast this morning. I was getting myself all situated and ready to go to knit on, hmm, I don't know what I was knitting on. Oh no, maybe I was cleaning the kitchen. Who knows? I was doing something that allowed me just to sit and watch. Um, and while I was occupied with something else with my hands and the podcaster was talking about yarn and the cost of yarn. And recently I think I have spent a arm and a leg <laughs> on yarn as needles at the ready would say I broke the bank um, and then decided to rebuild it and break the bank a little bit more. And it made me wonder about like, why do we buy the yarn and this and the other? And the reality is that we as a or I shouldn't say we, there are many instances where people feel buyer's remorse when they buy something, especially if they're doing something for themselves and other instances where people can have two gosh darns about what others think about what they buy. And so today I wanted to share my random thoughts about yarn and what it does. For me, this yarn that I have on my desk is an array of yarn that I purchased over this entire year. Now that I've fallen in love with knitting, I am never going back. And it's like when you're dating someone new, you invest in this new relationship. You want to give it all, all of you in a healthy way to ensure that the relationship would have a long, long lasting presence in your life. And so that's what yarn is for me. So when I initially started with this whole crafting situation, I was a red heart person because that's the only yarn I had access to. And over time, I'm just going to spin around, I was able to acquire a pretty massive quantity of acrylic yarn that unfortunately does not meet my fancy. It does not meet the needs that I have as a crochet or a knitter. And unfortunately, a lot of this yarn that I purchased, especially the Woolies, the Woolies I got on sale from um, Michael, not Michael's, it was um, Lion Brand. They were having a crazy sale. And I was like, oh gosh, like how am I going to pass this up? Like it was like $2 just gain for Woolies and I was like, oh, I'll get it. And so I picked, um, it looked like I picked um, two colors that I don't typically use. I used, um, I picked like a linen, linen color in a um, blush pink color and got it. And it was like, oh, I'm gonna make up all sorts of things with it. And couldn't think of anything I wanted to do with it, which is the reason why it's sitting there. And that's actually a smaller quantity because I actually donated a chunk of that yarn to uh, the Fiber Arts Club at my school that I work at, as well as to other crafters. And so just continuing on with my yarn purchasing, I've come to realize that it's okay if I don't have a, a pattern in mind for yarn. There are some yarns that I've purchased that I just thought was really cool. So for example, this yarn I purchased from Dollar Tree. I know this is um, mirrored the other way, so it's gonna look different. It's called, it's Premier's yarn called Just Yarn. It's worsted weight. It's 131 um, yards, 120 meters, 100% um, acrylic. Um, and I read it in its, let's see, 18 stitch. It's um, 18 by 24. It's a gauge for knitting needles and it's about 12 to 15 um, for a crochet hook if you're using five or 5.5 millimeter. And it's actually a decent quantity of yarn. And I've used this for um, a baby's blanket. Uh, not this particular skein, but another. And I've had some fairly good success with this yarn, which is the reason why I decided to keep this in my stash and potentially use it in a um, pattern that I'm working on or will be working on in the near future. But this yarn of skein only cost me a dollar and I was really excited about it. I'm like, why am I spending like between three to ten dollars on acrylic yarn when I can get another acrylic yarn that is going to give me the same fill for a similar amount of yardage for only a dollar. So it got me thinking about acrylic yarn, which brings me to my Barocco vintage. I love Barocco. I made um, my first successful knit was with Barocco. I, I accidentally used the Cascade <laughs> 220 Superwash with that particular pattern and that's okay it was a two-tone um, pattern um, 
sweater I made the Sunday pullover by a petite knit and uh, wore that sweater for quite a bit. But unfortunately, the more I wore it, the more irritating it became around my neck. I, it was something about the shine. It was fine on my shoulders and whatnot, but around my neck, it would just become irritable. Uh, and I decided to donate it. So I donated that sweater. But this particular skin and yarn cost me almost $12. And with this, it's, um, let's see, let's see yardage on this. It's 52% acrylic, 40% wool, and 8% nylon, which I guess you can use it for a variety of products, um, projects, excuse me, and it's 218 yards. So $12 for 218 versus $1 for 131. So that experience with that particular sweater um, pushed me to stop buying so much acrylic yarn. Um, when Two of Wands came out with her um, partnership with uh, Lion Brand, The Color Theory, I was very hesitant about buying it. Uh, a couple of the podcasters that I watch um, use this particular skin of yarn, and I was like, oh, maybe uh, it's 246 yards. Um, it's obviously weight for, you can get about the similar, same thing as Barocco, where it's 14 by 20 for 5.5, 20 by 27 if you use 4.5 uh, millimeters. And I had, for almost a year, hesitated about buying this yarn and then decided about two months ago now, because that's how long I've had it, to go ahead and buy it. It was on sale at Joann's. Purchased a sweater quantity because I decided I'm going to make a ranunculus out of this. Well, it's two months later. I still haven't made it. If you look over there, you see that its friends are still sitting over there and nowhere near ready to make a ranunculus with it. Um, and hopefully it will not go to waste or be donated but i still like the yarn i love the color uh and i think it would be a great monoculus um i think it would work out really well and it from what i've heard it doesn't peel um too bad but the reality is most yarns do peel so you gotta take it where it is however i did purchase some of that anti-peeling yarn and so far so good the reality is i have a lot of yarn and I always feel this insane need and it's definitely it makes me feel insane and sorry if I'm using that word lightly I'm not trying to dismiss um mental health and impact that has on people it's just I feel upset I should say I became obsessed there are instances where I'm obsessed with um the yarn and the pattern and finding the right pattern for the yarn and if I don't I'm fearful that it's going to have detrimental consequences and it's like why would I spend all this time and money on this material and have nothing for it and it's just sitting there which brings me back to the yarn woolies that's been there for almost a year and hasn't been touched same thing with the uh, touch of alpaca I was obsessed with buying that yarn I wanted to buy it finally saved up enough to purchase it because I'm a very budget friendly or I was very budget conscious about buying yarn and always made myself budget and save up before I did um, any massive purchases, especially given the fact that there's other things that happen in life that's more important than buying yarn. So anywho, um, having gone through all that, purchased that yarn, haven't done anything with it. And I've now had that touch of alpaca for two years and I decided not to donate it because I really was obsessed with it. I really wanted to make something with it and just couldn't do it. I shouldn't say couldn't do it. Haven't been able to find the right pattern for it, especially now that I'm more hesitant about using acrylic given the um, impact that it's had on my skin as well as on a garment. I noticed that some of the garments that I make with acrylic yarn, especially my crochet garments, it stretches out. Um, it's more likely it's me than the acrylic because... Um, I don't know, at the time when I was making those crochet garments, I didn't know how to do gauge swatching for um, crochet. I didn't do it properly, I think is a better word. So with that said, um, I haven't gotten rid of it and it's still there and hopefully one day I will do something with it. However, um, when I talk about my obsession, I spend a lot of time looking at different yarns and trying to decide if I'm going to buy it, when I'm going to buy it, even have like little calendar reminders of when to buy certain yarns that I have should have saved up enough money to do so. Um, I had met my budget goal earlier. Um, when I say early, I would say I met it around uh, April. And so I've been buying a, 
a surplus of yarn and I'm now getting towards the end of that um, budget where I'm like, okay, I only have this much set aside. Like, what am I going to buy with it? And a part of me is trying to be really intentional about buying yarn because, again, I have a very large quantity of acrylic yarn, for example, that I purchased on a whim because I saw it online and was like, I've been watching it about, watching people talk about the yarn. I've been hearing all different things. I want to experience it myself. And then once I get it, I don't do anything with it and it's sitting there. And I just want to stop doing that, which brings me to this beautiful ball of yarn. And so this was my first ball of yarn that I ever purchased from the country of France. I literally ordered it from a French, um, online store don't remember the name of it it was one of those late at night I'm like I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna do it I'm sure we've all been there before and um so I'm not gonna even pretend to know how to pronounce this but this is 100% wool it's 250 millimeters um you can use uh four to five millimeter kneading needles and you get between uh, 19 to 17 stitches and 27 to 25 or 25 to 27 um, rows and what's so cute is actually in French um, and this was for a Surrey Nolon um, pattern I believe it's called Cinna I don't even remember the name of it but I saw the pattern loved 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 it and I wanted to make um, a sweater and I love the color that she put, and I kept obsessing about it. But the what the online stores that carry this yarn did not have that particular color. It was like this cinnamon orange. And then I did finally find one store that carried it, but I also have, again, a sweater quantity of Heartland Cinnamon Spice, I think is the color, yarn. And I'm like, well, I need to do something with that. So I went after I purchased the yarn, excuse me, the pattern, I tried to do a gauge swatch with the Heartland and it didn't make me gauge. And I tried it with it. I mean, I spent a lot of time trying to get gauge with that yarn and it just didn't do it, which was really disappointing because the color of that Heartland yarn would match that. And so I've, you know, told myself, why don't you just treat yourself to the yarn that the designer used? And they, the store that had the yarn in my price point they didn't have it in the color so i bought that one which i do like that color i love the way oatmeal looks on my skin and the problem with that has now been sitting here for a good four maybe five months now and i was obsessed with this pattern i was obsessed with the yarn when i purchased the pattern it was around the same time that i was having an andrea maori meltdown because i couldn't successfully knit up the these pair of socks that i had um ordered the yarn I ordered from Magpie Fibers and the socks are called Sparks by um, Andrew Amari. Beautiful sock pattern. Highly recommended. It is not the designer. It's me. So because I was not successful in doing the mosaic um, knitting with this beautiful yarn that I got from Magpie Fibers that I spent a little over, this one was not as expensive because their yarn is very expensive. So for two skeins of yarn that I purchased from them, the the online store that I use, the Magpie Fibers, I believe um, at the time they were accepting shop pay, so I was paying in installments, so that way it can kind of ease the burden of paying such a massive amount of money for only two skeins of yarn. Uh, so purchased that, attempted to knit the socks with it, and it was an epic fail, which was really disappointing. I'm still feeling it, and I'm determined to improve my stock knitting, so that way I can knit these socks. So the, those are my um how can I say this there's this term that I heard once by a knitting podcast I can't remember but it's it's like it's going to be my legacy that ultimate pattern that special pattern to me that I'm willing to keep it's as a keepsake because I've had to do a lot of practice patterns in order to get there because mosaic knitting it's not my strong suit and my hope is that once I master the art of knitting with socks and getting used to those DPNs and getting used to the magic loop doing both um and then I should be able to try out mosaic knitting with that and then I go back and forth should I do my first mosaic knitting on socks or should I do it on a garment a larger garment so I'm back and forth about that so that's the reason why this particular skein of yarn is on hold but again it's just sitting there and that is now going it will be a year in august when i purchase that yarn yeah so which brings me to another obsession that i had i think i've talked before about kim hargraves 
But let me also tell you about Rowan. Rowan has some of the best photography knitting I've ever seen. I mean, just look. It literally makes you want to, oh gosh, why am I buying more patterns when I have patterns in here I can use? But anyway, it really just makes you want to go out and buy all this stuff in order to make it, such as this pattern, this lovely one right here. You see where my finger's pointing? I don't know how, but somehow I came across an image of this particular pattern and it became my new obsession. And I spent way too much time researching and I'm a good researcher and I figured out what magazine it was in and then I the magazine is out on uh, print. This was published. What year was this? Hang on, I'm gonna tell you. This was published actually publication information. Gosh, when was this published? I don't have a publication date. 2017, it was reprinted. It was originally printed in 2016. It was reprinted in 2017. And um, as I mentioned before, July 2021 is when I started knitting. So for me, I was really excited about all the beautiful designs I saw in this book. But I realized I did not have the skills to even knit what's on the cover, much less the pattern that I saw. When I saw the jacket, I just thought I could do it. Um, but the yarn that it called for was almost like it would be like three to four hundred dollars for the yarn um, for that particular quantity and the intricate stitch work that would require I just it's for an advanced um, knitter and it's not that it didn't say that online but I was feeling really um, hmm my ego was feeling inflated my knitting ego was feeling inflated because I had successfully knitted um the folklore cardigan um by it's a it's produced on lion brands but i don't know who was the designer but i knitted that and i i crushed it well i didn't crush it because there were definitely some mistakes in there but i felt really proud of myself um with that particular carding knitted the wrong size ended up having to give it away but still feeling really proud of myself so i thought when i saw this um image that i could do it i purchased it and luckily, I stopped myself from buying three hundred plus dollars worth of yarn, um, and realized because rowing yarns it's very expensive. This lovely soft yak DK fifty grams, seventy percent, seventy six percent cotton, fifteen percent yak, and nine percent nylon. And this particular colorway doesn't say it's like a grayish color. It's a steel gray. It's um, gray is one of my favorite colors. Um, that is a blonde hair. Don't know. There is no one in my house but blonde. But, okay. But anyway, um, this yarn is 22 by 30 for 4 inches using 4 millimeter. It's, it's, uh, it's super soft. I definitely like it. Um, it's a beautiful color and it's a chain knit. Here, I don't know if you can see that. It's chain. Um um, plying so I definitely know it will hold up and uh, Kim Hargraves this is her primary that I've only seen all her patterns that I've read in her books that I've purchased they're always in um, Rowan so that's the reason why I purchased it because of Kim Hargraves and I the yarn that the jacket I just showed you a picture of that would have had to be knitted in a um damn that is that would have been had to be knitted in um, Rowan but my point is is that I was obsessed about this pattern, um, really obsessed and just was desperate to learn, not to learn, to purchase all the things needed in order to do it. And it was not, and it hasn't been done. It is, I have only knitted, out of all my Kim Hargrave, I have four Kim, I'm down to three. I have four, I donated one because I was angry with it and now I feel kind of stupid about that. but. That's another knitting ramble episode. Um, but anywho, I purchased the yarn, excuse me, the book. I have purchased all this yarn and I was already talked about this. So I have one, two, three. I've knitted four um, pa um, patterns so far out of the Kim Hargraves book. Um, did two from one book and one from another that I ended up donating and then 
I guess that's it. Maybe I did only three. I thought I did two because I know I did a scarf, I did a hat, and I did a pullover. So I've only done three of the patterns in a book. So those books are sitting there on my bookshelf at the bottom. Not doing it. Here's another example of me buying a whole bunch of yarn. So this brings me to another part of the story. So like I said, the people at Rowan and Kim Hargraves, and I know she used to work for Rowan, so this is part of it as well. And sweet family, like they are the sweetest. I have emailed several times when I had questions about a pattern and they did a phenomenal job responding to my questions and being overly helpful with that. So I have absolutely no complaint, nothing whatsoever. But because I was so obsessed with one of the books, I think it's Gray. Yep, Gray. So Gray, as I mentioned before, I got it when around my birthday. And it was also around the time when my husband had generously offered to give me a large sum of money so I can buy all the yarn that I wanted. And I did. I thought I did anyway. Because I thought because I spent 20 something dollars on a book about knitting patterns that I had to buy a large quantity of yarn. So that way the book was getting what its value and whatnot. I was... <sighs> obsessed so drops for floor was purchased I bought two sweater quantities of this no being I'm um, being dishonest I bought three sweater quantities of drops for flora um, ended up donating two other three then I bought uh, two sweater quantities of the baby alpaca um, one in this beautiful uh, light pink you can see it over there here yeah. i'm sorry i'm like i don't know if you can see over there i'm going to use that for my um um bad day sweater uh and then i bought the and i have another one in another blue so which i still don't know what i'm going to do with because initially i was going to pair it with this other um blue alpaca but i did not like the way it looked so i bought i also bought um Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six sweater quantities of Drops Brush Alpaca Silk. So in addition to buying the this yarn, which I bought, this one I bought from Knit Picks because it's for a Kim Hargar Graves, also initially for a Kim Hargar Graves. The patterns I was going to knit with that, realized I just did not have the skill to do that. So I figure I should buy less expensive yarn for it, which brings me <laughs> to my other obsession. Because again, um, I've always prided myself saying, oh, I'm not influenced by social media. That has no hold on me. Well, clearly I'm wrong because watching, I want to say um, Caleb, um, I forgot the name of his channel. He doesn't really produce videos anymore. I know his first name was Caleb. And he was knitting a sweater with host yarn, garn. And I was like, ooh, I loved the color that he picked and the cone and the way he described it. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Maybe I'll check it out. So went on the website and saw that this yarn is so for treat. And there's a large variety of colors. So I went ahead and purchased a sweater quantity of this yarn, which is called Ties, the color of pearl. 70% wool, 30% silk, it's 287 meters, which is about 314 yards, knitting needles 3 to 3.5, and you get about 25 stitches. And I haven't knitted anything with it. Oh, a swatch. That's it. That's the only thing I've done with this. And the same thing with the other three sweater quantities I got from their website. Um, another, oh, I'm actually lying. With the other sweater quantity of yarn I got, I ended up donating it. Um, it went to one of my co-workers at work and whoever got it, because I remember I told you about the yarn exchange that I did at work. So that happened. So another obsession happened. Hand dyed yarn. I religiously watch Needles at the Ready. And when I heard that Kevin was a hand dyer, it's like, oh, I'll, I'm going to always support small businesses. Eventually, I check them out. I ha Again, I have reached my budget goal super early, so I decided to buy a 
a, um, two skeins of his hand dyed yarn. Got the skeins, love the yarn. Like this yarn color is gorgeous. I am actually 99% sure I'm going to be using this skein with a um, another <laughs> pattern I found uh, or influence to do. It's a crochet pattern and it's this beautiful shawl. I don't usually um, crochet or knit shawls. I, it, the pattern really has to speak to me to do it because um, making a shawl for some reason just doesn't seem worth it. It's given the way that I like to wear my scarves, but I noticed that the way I wear my scarves, it would be better if I have shawls. So I already mentioned I'm doing another shawl, but I was watching Expression Fiber. I love to watch it even when I don't buy or knit the pattern. I just love um, Sandy. I think her personality is amazing. So, and she's the one that got me into knitting. Uh, her YouTube channel um, is what pushed me over to that next side and why I'm a knitter today. And so when I was watching, I was like, oh gosh, that pattern looks pretty simple. I feel like I can do that. So I went to work and when I was on break, I had a skein of yarn in my drawer because who doesn't have a skein of yarn at work um, in a crochet hook at work? Of course I do. So I'm sitting there and I'm knitting and I was able to do the first part of the triangle and I got distracted because someone came in and was talking to me and I was trying to do the lace part and I already saw my mistake on that but I was like, well, wait a second, that's an easy mistake. I can easily fix that. I totally want to do the pattern. Pattern's free. And so I was like, okay. I'm like, well, let me just see what yarn they're recommending. And I have saw this beautiful it's about it's in a similar color I know it's hard to see this because of the lighting um but it's in a similar color it's this like it's a little not lilac it's just like a it has a richness like a pink and purple and white it's like all blended together it's so beautiful and like pearl like a um Himalaya salt you know the color Himalaya salt that's what this yarn looks like it looks like a variegated version of Himalaya salt so I purchased that and I got it, I used a discount code because she always has a discount code on that day that you can purchase the yarn that goes with the pattern that she's promoting. So I bought the discount on the yarn and what would have cost me 120, only cost me 84. So, and I got three skeins of yarn. It's a little over 400 yards of yarn. So I figured that plus with this, this one, this would be the pop of color that um, I think because it, it's not within the same family house I think it'd be the perfect pop because the way the pattern is designed you have this one not one you have multiple sections of this big bright pop of color so can't wait to crochet that I think that's going to crochet up pretty quickly and I like to do at least one to two shawls a year whether knitted or crochet um, so I'm really excited about that and I'm going to stop whatever I'm doing to do that so in addition to that hand eye yarn I mentioned that I've become a little obsessed with knitting socks have I? No? Well, let me tell you. I'm obsessed with knitting socks. So I want to knit all the socks because I see these beautiful socks and I'm just like, it's not fair. I don't know how to do them. I've knitted, I've, I've made two socks, one crochet, and I shouldn't say two. I've um, made multiple crocheted socks, but they didn't come out that well. They were more tube socks. And the people that have been recipient of them were very kind and saying, oh, wow, thanks, Rachel. It probably threw them away. Same thing with um my first pair of knitted socks. I should have just did it around like my instincts told me, but I was trying to follow the the, the design pattern and they were they were epic fell. But my best friend, she said they were beautiful and she again she's a really nice person. She probably never has worn those again. <laughs> I don't blame her. So um I got that. Uh so I have a bug. I really want to get better at sock knitting. I think it will help improve my garment knitting because of the manipulating of the the stitches i just i just think it's going to be a good fit so um i found that i have i'm much more comfortable doing german short rolls because of um last summer knitting those uh socks and i had success with those socks they actually fit and i do wear them um as well and i try not to wear them as what much because i made them with acrylic yarn and i'm scared that i'm going to wear them out and they're not gonna um they're gonna fall apart and i'm really proud of them so I wear them, but I wear them sparingly. Uh, it has to be really super cold and I'll put them on and they keep my feet pretty warm. So, and I made those with um, Mandel, um, you know, the, oh gosh, the Lion brand, Mandolin or Mandela. 
I don't remember what it's called. It starts with M. It's their ombre. It was really pretty. Really liked it. Wanted to make it and it came out well. I was proud of myself. But I learned a lot for making that particular sock pattern. But I don't want to just knit weight for it. And that was a free pattern I found on Ravelry. Um, and I've been knitting um, for long enough where I feel comfortable buying patterns. And I'm like, well, let me get better at knitting socks and build my confidence in knitting socks before I actually buy my first sock knitting pattern. And I'm like, oh, wait, I already did that. I already purchased a sock knitting pattern. Let me just wait again. Luckily, the um, book by uh, Kiki from Kikinova, um, she has her own um, YouTube channel. She wrote this book called Knit This. Um, and in that book, she has two sock patterns. So between that and some others, I think I have enough. And I, th I think I actually have the sock pattern in one of the books down here. So I have enough access to sock patterns so I think I can improve my skill before going full on buying but the crazy sock lady also has a DK um, sock pattern because I was using the spree socks sock pattern for their shorties and I just I was not feeling confident in what was coming out like um I just kept it made me feel like I was doing it wrong and so I decided to not do that pattern and do the crazy sock lady pattern and hopefully find more success with that and so far so good I've been able to do the um the rib which is spot on I did a German um short roll cast on a German cast on so that was good and then I did the um I'm working on the leg right now and I got both socks going at the same time but on two separate dpms because um I find that I don't really like magic loop I tend to ladder and my magic loops and I've um she wrote the patterns um for DK yarn where you can magic loop so it should be fine and it's using 3.25 knitting needles because um the spree socks require the 3.5 and I just didn't like the fabric it was making but this sock is 3.25 and I really like the fabric it was making so far so um, and it's it's fitting around the calf, so I'm really really excited about that. So I'm gonna keep going on with that particular pattern. We're in good place with that. Um, so that's gonna be my work knit. So during meetings um, or my break, that's when I'm gonna be working on that pattern. Uh, so I'm using the hand dye yarn I purchased from Lola Yarns, and again, I've been obsessed with buying yarn from locally local yarn stores owned by women specifically black women or black families so that's been really great to get back and plus she's in georgia like come on so but i still like to buy yarn from stores that let me play in installments which brings me to biscotti yarns i am going to be knitting the um the zipper sweater by petite knit for my family and i i'm determined to do this i'm going to make my youngest his first then I'm gonna make mine and then I'll make my eight-year-old and my husband and then my husband and the 18 year old well he'll be 19 by then um, I'm gonna make them all the same uh, sweater and I was hoping that we could take like a family photo in it so I'm really I'm excited about that um, I'm waiting till it gets closer to cooler months because I'm um, I just couldn't imagine because both all the pattern requires to use mohair and I just couldn't imagine interacting with mohair when it's hot so but we do have AC in the house so maybe I will who knows but I really am excited about that pattern um I've read it multiple times and I feel confident that I can successfully knit it I'm going to make sure I also print it out um as well because that way I can write my notes on it because since I'm going to be making um, multiple ones I want to make sure I make it well because I'm going to start it off with a small one and if it doesn't fit my six-year-old I can still give it to my nephew who's younger or donate it one or the other so I went on Biscotti Yarn to I already I'm going to use the blue sky fiber that I was going to do for my Copenhagen sweater which I'm switching to the Plymouth this remember this I got this on my wonderful day trip to Webb's such a great afternoon yes so I went so I went on Biscotti Yarn. They had the their website said that they had the yarn I was looking for and in the quantity I was looking for. So I ordered it, but I guess it was just a, a, a data entry error. They didn't have it. So I had while I was on the site, I purchased the sweater quantity I needed for the zipper sweater. But I also bought these two skein of yarns. 
I've been hearing so much about camel and I'm like, ooh, I want to try it. And I know Mayak has like um, yak and baby camel yarn and that yarn is just way too expensive. I just can't wrap my head around buying a skein of yarn that's only 200 yards for like 30 to $38. Like it's um, like $38. I just, I'm like, if I can pay it in installments, I would do it because then it won't make me feel as guilty first point. But like, yeah. Yeah, that's why I haven't purchased Mayak or um, Miss Babs yarn. It's just way too expensive to do at once. And you don't get Miss Babs, I will, she didn't say that. Miss Babs, you actually get a large quantity of yarn. Like if you're spending $56 on one skein of yarn, you're getting like a six to 700 yards of yarn. So that's okay. But I purchased this and I saw this and I really liked it. And I got the sticker and it said $34. And I'm scared to check the receipt and see if it was actually $34. I hope not. Um, but it's really soft. I mean, it is really soft. And let me tell you, this is definitely the type of yarn you want to knit up a whole sweater in because it, oh my God, it is so soft. Um, so unfortunately, it only comes with 251 yards. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. So it is $34. I could, you know, put this on a budget and you know, accumulate the funds needed and buy and buy the sweater quantity of it. But what sweater I'd be making with it, I don't know. But I wouldn't want to spend more than two hundred dollars on a sweater. The most I've ever spent on a sweater of for yarn is two hundred and fifty eight dollars, and that was for my April cardigan. And I was having a very bad day. I I mean a really bad day. It was a tough time. Um, my mother in law. Um, my mother in law was uh, had passed away and. There was some um, fortunate, unforeseen family drama that unfolded from that, coupled with just transitioning back into full-time in-person teaching after the pandemic, coupled with just regular life stuff. It was just, uh, it was a day where I was just feeling very anxious and overwhelmed. And I, I got out of work and I was on my way to go pick up my sons and I decided to stop at the yarn store that's near my job and I bought that yarn and I felt better <laughs> I, I sat in a car waiting because my it wasn't time to pick up the boys yet so I sat in my car and I cast on um and it came out so pretty I loved the swatch I made and then I ended up casting on the sweater while I, again while I was waiting and it worked up so well and it came out so nice and so I may have spent $258 on that but that was $250 worth of therapy and it's the sweater that keeps on giving because when I'm having a moment or I need to like snuggle up, oh, it's one of my favorite sweaters to wear, especially working, it fits me so well. So I have absolutely no regret about that. Um, which brings me to final thoughts because I gotta go fit my babies to bed. Yes, I probably have a couple grand worth of yarn in my yarn room um, and more is on the way. And there are many people who would cast so much judgment on me because of the different things I could have used with those funds. And I do not disagree. <laughs> However, I cannot deny the fact that it has calmed my heart when I've had some moments of anxiety. And if you've ever been someone who's dealt with anxiety, you know it can be overwhelming um because you lose a sense of control i am someone that suffered uh, from mental health issues for most of her young adult life and got a handle of it on it once i went to therapy and learned how to cope and exercise was an excellent one but um having children i really don't have time for myself like that and now that my boys are older i have turned to another resource that gives me an opportunity to express myself and so yes this is probably at least 100 because that's like 30 that was yeah and that's 30 60 90 100 115 115 18 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. yeah i would say about it. oh actually just on the table that's only 160 dollars so maybe i shouldn't feel so bad but you do what you gotta do to take care of yourself as long as it's healthy and productive. 
I'm making donations um, with the yarns that I have. I make donations to people, to locations. I make garments for people all the time. And once I'm finished buying all my birthday yarn, which actually is coming sooner than later because I don't, I've purchased so much where I'm like, oh, I don't really need to do as much. I won't have anything else to buy. All the, I have potential yarn. I have yarn for potential patterns. That's in my queue because now I'm like really intentional and selective about what yarn I select. So that way I'm not just saying like, oh, I'm going to knit that pattern like I did with the rowan, knowing that I don't have the skill set to do it. So there's no point in buying the yarn for it. So I've learned my lesson. And now in a few years from now, I'm going to knit that pattern. And you're insane. You're gonna be like, dang, Rachel. But it's not this year. But maybe 2025. <laughs> um, but anyway, I have one yarn I forgot to mention is that sometimes you can also get some really good and expensive yarn. And this is my final one. This is uh Patton's Beehive Baby yarn. Um, this was held in um Michael's and I I loved it and decided that I wanted to buy more of it, so I did. This is the gray, there's the white, there's my other, like this yarn I got on sale. This yarn was from my day at Pick Up Every Stitch, it was awesome. More yarn, oh this is my new um, hand dye that I got from Needles Leather Ready. This is what I got from Hayes House, which I already told you guys about. This one I might use for that super special I don't want to knit a pair of socks with this. I want to knit a garment with that. It's dope. I'm going to do something with this one. Maybe. Ideas. Uh, I'm going to do something with it. This is going to be my first color work socks. Um, my hope is to do that sooner than later. And I just realized, like a dumb butt, I have all this like scrappy yarn. So this is not so much scrappy as it is. I bought it for a sweater and decided not to make it. But I have all this leftover yarn that I can totally make some socks with, at least with this one. I don't know if you can see that, but that's like, oh, I know the color. This is actually the yarn I use for my April cardigan. And I have a significant amount of it left and I can do the hill with the other color. So I don't know why I didn't realize that, that I can totally knit I don't have to buy a whole bunch of sock yarn now that I have the that um, yarn pattern. So I'm going to do that. And I still have the yarn that was gifted to me. I'm going to knit something with that. And hopefully one day I will have the courage to knit the mosaic yarn I purchased. A mosaic pattern. And slowly but surely putting it all away. thing is that most of these yarn like this one is going to be for my best friend I'm gonna make her a um a cardigan the champagne cardigan but I'm gonna make it a deep V and this was supposed to be for a vest I don't think that vest is gonna be made but I have it that's my mohair a lot of it Where did you come from? Down there? No. Maybe over here? Hmm. Maybe that's where you came from. Yeah, I think that's... You came from over here. Oh, did I ever show you my black console hat? Yes, it's all finished now. I didn't block it yet, but it's done. This is gonna be maybe used for my Zig sweater. Like that's all the yarn for it. I mean, and I know I've shown you that before, so oh, it doesn't feel too boring. Zig sweater. So let me go over there. I'm doing a dark gray, a light gray, and a cream. The swatch made it look good, so I can wait to cast that on. And I've just successfully cast on the slanty slip on it's finally I um here's a swatch let me see if I can find oh here it is I went to um circle of stitches it's this yarn store in Salem Mass 
and I had got my hair cut. I know you can't tell, but got my hair cut. And I was like, ooh, you know, I'm out and it will only take a little bit to get there. So I got there and I'm like, okay, they pretty much have all the same yarns that I would get from my other yarn store, but it was, she was pretty receptive. She was not as, no one is as friendly as pick up every stitch. I'm sorry. The second I walked in here, I felt like family. But anyway, I walked in, was able to wander around, and I found um, this yarn, which I've been anxious to try. This is Labian Ame. It's hand dyed. Um, I got the Merino DK. It's called the Yellow Brick Road. Um, super wash, 250 meter. Excuse me, 230 meters, which is about 252 yards. So, really like it. And um, it was either that one or the Malabrigo, and I already worked with Malabrigo, so I rather chose that one. And that yarn was a little, that one was 34. Um, but on the site, it was only 30, so I, I bought it from the website, the additional one, because um, of the discount. So I made the swatch first, and the pattern I know is hard to see because it's rolling up on itself. But I made the swatch in the pattern, and for me, it was really just to see if I liked the yarn. Because if I didn't like it, I would just make socks with it. But I did. And decided that I want to um, make this sweatshirt with it. And when the first try and it cast on, it was a success. So it was the right right call. Because um, this yarn wasn't cutting it. Um, it was wrong. It just... This yarn has to be made with um, a stockinette. It cannot be a textured uh, sweater. Or shirt so I just recently found the um, Kadri um, camisole I'm gonna knit that with this yarn I have been multiple people have shared um, different patterns but I, I think the Kadri camisole is gonna be my my go-to I'm gonna check in my Kim Hart Grace book to see if there's anything there but anything better than that one, but I don't want to do lace work with that yarn. I want it to be stocking that. So, no, I'm not going to check anywhere else. I'm just going to go with it. All right. I need to go. Thank you for listening to my knitting rambles.